start save and count down from there. So three, two, one, go. All right, welcome to Skyrim. So right off the bat, you're going to notice a bit of stuttering right there. That's uh, activating an infinite sprint glitch. Yeah, it's going to be really useful because I can jump around while I'm sprinting. And uh, I can do some Two, sick parkour one, out of Helgen. Go. All right. Oh, bad jump. So there we go. go. Right off the bat, you're going to notice a bit of stuttering right there. That's, uh, All right, so uh, this is going to be the first big glitch in the run. Uh, it's going to be a little hard to explain, but uh, bear with me. It's uh, going to make a little save right here. Oh, bad jump. Oh, shoot. That's really bad, actually. That's a quick save. Let's just go back from the beginning. Actually, let's this is gonna be the first make the save first. There you go. It's gonna be a little hard to explain, but bear with me. It's fine. Not bad, not bad. Gonna make a little save right here. Okay, so we made a save there. Remember that save. We'll come back to that. Let's go through the intro. Go back from the beginning. Just gonna go through one more time, actually, just to make sure no foul plays involved. <laughs> that we're actually playing the game legit. <laughs> Gotta make sure this run is on the level. Yep. Oh, you can just go now. Yeah, we don't <laughs> even, <laughs> even need that save, save anymore. <laughs> I remember that save. We'll come back to that. Let's go through the intro. All right, we're just gonna use some quick save quick loads to skip some audio here no or dialogue. That we're actually playing the game legit. All right, and now we're going to make a, another save and load the first save that we made. So right here, I'm going to go through a cave, or I'm going to try to go through this loading zone, but I want to pause the game as I'm going through it. All right, there, I didn't get it. All right, and now we're going to make another save. Ooh, setup might not and be too good. This trick is so right here, extremely precise. Yeah. There's a very small window to actually do it. If the menu doesn't open at all, that means you're too late. If it flashes through. like that, it means you're right, just it. slightly too early. Oh, too late. This trick is extremely precise. Pause? Yeah. All right. All right, that's perfect. So I'm going to quit out to the main menu. Um, and since I was going through a load zone during that main menu, I'm going to load this save, which is the one where we got our hands unbound in Helgen. And then we uh, come out for the other side of Helgen, and that's Helgen. All right, I'm being told to pause, so. So I'm going to quit out to the main menu. What? Um, and since I was going through a load zone during that main menu, I'm going to load this save, which is the one where no. we got our hands right. unbound in Helgen. Um, and then we uh, come out for the other side of Helgen, and that's right. Helgen. Yep. Right, I'm being told to pause, so. So I'm going to put out to the main menu. What? Um, and since I was going through a load zone during We're good? I think that should do. Do you want them to continue the wave? Okay, go ahead. Alright, cool. <laughs> right off the bat, alright, good. So um, now we're out of Helgen. Uh, first place we're going to go to is Riverwood. We need some gold for our journey through Skyrim. So we're just going to go get that real quick. Uh, we need to discover Riverwood anyway because we're going to be coming back there a few times. So just going to go talk to Alvor in Riverwood, but we're not really going to talk to him. We're just going to get some gold in an interesting way. You're going to smooth talk him really hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we are. And we're just going to safely traverse these <coughs> cliffs. This looks a lot more dangerous than it actually is. Yeah. The falling damage in Skyrim is pretty interesting. Uh, it, like, I don't know, like a foot can, like, kill you. If the difference is that much. I'm gonna do some sick parkour straight into Alvor's smithy. Beautiful. So we're gonna ask him for some uh, stuff, and then we're gonna, as Chop said, smooth talk him. Alright, that's all the gold. Then we're gonna punch him in the face. Because for whatever reason, that uh, 
refreshes his inventory and he has more gold. And we're just going to get more gold. All right, that's all our gold for the run. And you're basically uh, you're keeping the vendor menu in sell mode while you open up his inventory, and that just lets you sell his own inventory to him and take all of his gold. Yeah, he's pretty much just buying his own stuff. It's great. You're really good at bartering. <laughs> yeah! All right, now we're making our way to White Run. Uh, the beginning of the run is just uh, discovering a few locations and getting to uh, all the first big sequence break. Ah! So right here, we're going to see that guard over there. We're going to do something pretty special. He's just minding his own business, doing guard things. And then some guy just punches him in the face. Oh, you missed. <laughs> you have committed crimes against And that uh, teleports us to Dragon's Reach, which is pretty useful. It's a lot faster than just running up all the way to Dragon's Reach. So now that we got that discovered, we can uh, go do actual speedrun things. Need a ride? Where do you want to go? Climb and back, and we'll be off. Discover our stables. Come back there later. And now we're going to Solitude. Solitude is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, Normally, you'd be going through Bleak Falls Barrow right now, but um, the, w the way questing works in Skyrim is if you can get to um, a later quest, all the previous quests are just ignored. Uh, they don't really matter. So this quest is right about in the middle of the uh, main quest line. So we're going to skip like eight or nine quests by doing uh, something in the Thalmor Embassy. And the Thalmor Embassy is like uh, completely... Um, well, you can't go inside. They have like a really tall invisible walls, and it's pretty much impossible to get in there. Like, it's not as simple as just uh, jumping over the uh, fenced walls they have. It's like the walls go up as tall as these trees. But if you have a bucket, you can uh, easily get through these walls because buckets are magical. So just gonna stand right here. Oh, wrong one. Get our trusty bucket, make a quick save, and right through the wall. Easy. Now, normally you come here to uh, learn about Esbern and all that stuff, and I'm just going to loot this chest. And that has a very important piece of paper. And we just skipped all the quests just by looting that chest. So now we're on diplomatic immunity, but a cornered rat is also triggered, so we could just well, go do that. No, I don't want to learn about White Run. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to learn about the cities that you're uh, you know, running past. Yeah. Past. It's not fast, though. <laughs> as well as uh, punching guards, we can just uh, punch horses as well. So we're just going to give them a nice little punch and get arrested. Okay. Horses are actually worth a lot more gold than guards and Jarls. Like, it's five extra gold. It's a very valuable animal. Yeah. Your donation thing is flashing whenever you got it sometime. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm just going to go through Riften, so if you want to read a donation, go, go for it. All right. We have a $5 donation from Anonymous. Come on, Ali. And we have a, a $5 donation from Jackintosh. Yo, Rexy, I stayed up till 7 a.m. just to triple zero viewer hosts your offline channel for good luck. Oh, nice. Thanks, I Jackintosh. I hope you're happy. <laughs> he does that a lot. Yeah, I'm very happy. Thanks for the host. It really helps me out. Someone there. You can't All right, so we're in Riften to uh, see Esbern. This is uh, pretty much normally what you would do. So we're just going to go talk to him. Tells us to go away, but we, once we tell him we're Dragonborn, he's like, oh, you're Dragonborn. I never actually like, found out that we're Dragonborn. We kind of skipped all of that. But yeah. <laughs> eh. We didn't see the Greybeards. We didn't get the Horn of Yurgen Windcaller. We, we're, we haven't even learned how to shout yet. But we, we know we're Dragonborn. Uh, you can read more donations. We're just waiting for him to open the door. 
All right. Well, we don't have any donations right now, but we just would like to thank the Mercedes for providing the equipment transport all week. And just a shout out to Gaming for God that night for creating the donation tracker for this event. Gaming for God? <laughs> Gaming for good? Am I awake? I don't know. Sorry, it's what I heard. It's the religious counterpart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. Okay, so uh, we just progressed some of the main quests and we made a save. And instead of going through uh, Riften again, we're just going to teleport out. Nice, first try. Yeah, once again, you, uh, you open the menu right as you enter the load zone and you quit out to the main menu and load a different save. And then the that save then gets uh, pushed through the area transition that you just walked into. So it effectively warps whatever save you have to another, another location. Well, yeah, it's, oh of. God. No it's it's really useful for like uh, right. indoor so sections and dungeons where you have to uh, we'll backtrack all the way back. But uh, we just got the companions. The companions are, uh, they're great. Uh, more of them later. God, I love Aelin. You should marry her or something. She's such <laughs> no, a good character. She's not worth <laughs> her, qu her quest is too long. All right, so uh, uh, normally we should go to Riverwood and progress more of the main quest, but uh, we can go to Carthspire right now and just get that out of the way. It uh, makes uh, Esbern a little more consistent because Esbern is a great NPC and he likes to behave. And it's not slower anyway because we're going to go here anyway, pick up some eggs. Oh, missed it. What will Grayscale think? <sighs> Don't. <laughs> Yeah, there was a runner of this game. His name was Grayscale. Uh, he just disappeared. Uh, so, picking up eggs for Grayscale. Miss you, buddy. Miss you, buddy. So, yeah, we're just going to discover Crossfire and progress more of the main quest and then uh, come back here. There's a number of different things that can happen on this walk, but unfortunately, we just got one of the boring ones. Yeah, there could be like a, a few drunk people or. A horse, a uh, ghost horse. That one's pretty good. All right, unfortunately, uh, some Forsworn live here and we're just invading their home. Wow, that's terrible. Are they friendly at least? Oh, we'll see. Hey, guys. Oh, oh no. No, they're not. So normally you'd have to come here with Esbern and Delphine and do a, a puzzle with them and do all that, but we can just walk around some invisible walls and do some parkour up a, uh, there we go. Parkour is always faster than puzzles. Pretty much, yeah. And we discovered it there, and, oh, enemies followed me. That's wonderful. That's really unlucky. So the uh, Forest Warren that he ran fast actually followed him in, which is pretty rare when you get the climb fast. Yeah, well, that climb was pretty fast, but I'm going to see if I can get eaten by this balcony. Aww. Oh. For some reason, if you jump, like, correctly, that balcony just, just like, suck you all the way to the second floor. It's great. Right here, we're just going to do a few waits. Uh, Delphine and Esbern need to talk, and they like to talk really slow, so we're just going to Use a few weights, a few quick save, quick loads, pass the time. And there we go. That skips a lot of talking. They're in the basement right now. Talking about our next move. There he is. One. And that's pretty much why we came to Carthspire early, because Esbern just doesn't like to appear there if you use a weight. And getting, to, getting him to actually like follow you there through the area is just absolutely the worst thing. Where do you want to go? So what I did there was, uh, after I talked to Esbern, I had to open up a door to Skyhaven Temple, and you do that by spilling blood. Uh, but you can just fast travel out and jump out of the animation and wait for the door. Like, normally the door takes around, like, 15 seconds to open. So one day we thought, hey, why don't we just go do something else while this door is opening? And it works. The door is going to be open when we get back. So right now we're going to see uh, Septimus Cygnus. He uh, has a pretty important item to get the Elder Scroll. We're going to actually get an Elder Scroll in this game. Why did you just throw yourself off a cliff? Uh, oh. no. Oh, you know, don't worry about it. 
Oh, there, there was a foot of water, so you were fine. Yeah. <laughs> a very realistic game. Now we got good fish RNG. It's the eggs. Normally the fish could block you there, and I've lost like two seconds once while on a run. I was really confused. Fish hitboxes are very solid. Hey, Wars. Where even is he? Oh, there he is. Hey, Walrus. Hey, Walrus. Alright, so Skyrim stealth mechanics are pretty great. Um, I'm going to see if I can get this first try. This is all pure skill. It's oh. all in the setup. <laughs> just, just, just wait. All right, let's see if we got good RNG. Oh, we got pretty good RNG, actually. So we're going to steal this cube. Oh, Whoa. look at the skill. That was amazing. It's the eggs, man, I'm telling you. Definitely not pure RNG. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I've had times where he's, like, detected me and it works, and I'm like, ah, I hate this game. <laughs> and it's supposed to be, like, I don't know, 50-something 50, 50 percent chance when, he's not, when you're hidden. And yeah. Sometimes it takes, like, 10 tries. It's pretty great. Isn't it amazing? It is amazing. All right, uh, we've got to go talk to them a bit more, but uh, before we do that, we're going to get a very important item. This is Dragon Bane. Uh, now I have two Dragon Banes. That's going to be really useful for the Alduin fight. Spoilers, we fight all the way. Wow. Heard of such a thing. You're probably right. Right. Yeah, when you're holding an item in front of you, you can just kind of mash, uh, pick up and quick save, and it just gives you two of the item. Yeah, for some reason, mashing quick save uh, just completely lags the game, and I guess if you spam uh, pick up as well, it just gives you another sword. You can do that forever, so. If you want to try that at home, go ahead. Do all your favorite weapons. And uh, right here, we're just going to the Tower of Mazark. It's an unmarked location, and it's going to be a, a lot of walking. This is the longest walking segment in the run. So uh, if you have any more donations, go for it. All right. We got a $1 donation from Votium saying, Hey, Rexy, <laughs> is it both your boy of both time? Good luck with your run, and I'm praying for first try, Tazzled Wobblegong. Oh, whoa. He also donates with another dollar with the exact same comment. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we also have an anonymous six fifty six dollar donation and uh, a donation of another six dollars and fifty six from Mev saying fourteen K hype. Ooh lad. Yeah, let's hope I get first try tasseled wob gong too, thanks Bo. I don't know if that's a marathon safe. Uh, I, I don't think I'll do it, to be honest. Uh. So what he's actually uh, heading for here is uh, <coughs> he needs to get an Elder Scroll to advance the main plot. And uh, normally you have to go through this big area called Black Reach. And it takes, you know, quite a while to go through, like 10 minutes You're going fast. Yeah. But mm, there's an unmarked location that you leave from that you can just kind of go directly to. Yeah, so here's the exit uh, to the Elder Scroll, or Blackreach. It's a really nice uh, area, actually, but, you know. For some reason, Bethesda just didn't program a wall here, so you can just slip by and activate the uh, back door. And now we're in the chamber where the Elder Scroll is located. Just have to solve this incredibly difficult puzzle. So there's the cube that we stole from that old man. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, here's the very difficult puzzle. It's, this gives chops trouble sometimes. Definitely. I struggle on pressing buttons. There we go. And then we're gonna pick up a very important item. Hint it's a bucket. 
buckets are pretty magical. Yeah, this one's a very special bucket, though. So we'll come back to that. Alright, remember when I said that the companions are my favorite uh, characters in the game? Well, we're gonna... I think you were being sarcastic. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I love these guys. It's not like, yeah... It's not like they're gonna make this very difficult for me. I have to steal this horse, right? And the companions are standing right... No, horse. Alright, fine. Come in. Turn around. Yeah, that's how you turn around. <laughs> sure. This is normally an incredibly simple and fast horse deal, but with the companions standing right there, you have to take some extra time to set it up. Yeah, it takes like two seconds to steal this horse, but the companions make that not possible. So right there, I activated an infinite uh, sprint for my horse, so he's going to infinitely sprint as well. There's actually two versions of the infinite sprint for the horse. There's a breakable version and an unbreakable version. I don't really activate the unbreakable until I get to the top because uh, it usually gives me good horse climbs. Oh. oh, this is a really good horse. This is a solid mountain goat you have here. Yeah, clearly intended. I mean, everyone did this. Come on. Yeah. You want to explain horse RNG? So horses in this game, you know, aren't supposed to be random like they all have the same base move speed um they all they have like different stamina but like it doesn't really matter that doesn't affect speed at all um but it seems like they differently clip like up or uphill and into mountains and they move uphill differently and it's like set randomly by by uh, causing the glitch, and you can also reset it by like doing quick save, quick load. So horses end up being a major RNG factor in the run where sometimes you just get a horse that just can't go up mountains, and it's terrible. And then you have other times where they just kind of fly upwards immediately. Yeah, a lot of people don't really believe me when I say there's horse RNG because they're just like, oh, this looks sorry. Right. You're climbing good. No. No. I lost 18 seconds in my PB to horses. Not that you're bitter about it. No, not at all. I mean, it's not like I'm mentioning it right now. Huh. Right. Could do a strat that I found here. It's a little risky. Don't fall. Whoa. Wow. Amazing. Don't even know if it saves time. <laughs> it looks cooler, so there's no point in timing yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. So the front door of High Rothgar is still locked because you never did the quest that actually opened up the graybeards. So you have to kind of go around the back door. Yeah. Where did you learn of that? And this is some very important dialogue. If you click on the wrong thing, Arnjir gets really pissed off at you. No. And then he refuses to talk to you for a while. No. And it takes so much time that the horse will disappear, but you Only still need the horse outside. He lives so that loses a whole bunch of time. Only those so I'm just gonna strong. bully him. I don't think I mentioned it, but you can also uh, bump into NPCs to skip dialogue. So yeah, bullying is fast. It is. All right, now we're gonna learn clear skies. Learning clear skies is actually super important. Oh, they're they're really excited about clear skies. I I love clear skies. <laughs> it's my favorite show. Horses actually uh, learn words as well. So. Just gonna learn the words on top of the horse. You, you, you don't actually need clear skies to get to the top to the top of the mountain because you know you have a horse, but you do need it before you get to the end of the run. Otherwise, you'll soft lock. Yeah, you need it for the uh, final fight. So we were talking about horse RNG. This is a this is a <laughs> very clear representation of that. This horse is struggling to go up a almost vertical slope. Like what what's wrong with it? I don't understand. I think it's broken. This one's, this, one, this one's going to the glue factory? Yep, straight to the glue factory. Alright. As soon as we get to the... Well, if, we, if he wants to. As soon as we get to the... Oh god, where am I? <laughs> it was clipping well, but it wasn't going uphill, so you can't really tell where you are. It's pretty great. Oh. God, I love Skyrim. It's all right. We made it. We're here. Oh, maybe not. Maybe. No, we're here. Oh, uh, there we okay. go. We're hey. Here. hey, we, we got there. there. Good job, horse. Okay, now we're going to talk to our boy Party Snacks. Good old Party Snacks. Who are you? I am. No. 
not until introduction. Now, uh, he won't actually talk to us until we uh, learn a word. Cause it's like, are you, are you sure you're Dragonborn? I don't know about that. So we're gonna learn this word first, and then we're gonna talk to him about uh, defeating Alduin and stuff. He really likes it when you blow fire in his face. Yeah, he's into that. So we're just gonna breathe some fire in his face real quick, so and what would you now he'll willingly talk to us. You would not. I'll do, but your our had remain. All right, this is where the run gets uh, pretty interesting. I'll uh, I'll let Chops cover it. It's, it's pretty great. So right now at this point, you've, like you have the Elder Scroll already. And you've and then you know that you need to go get uh, Dragonrend to actually stop Elduin. So you're supposed to go read the Elder Scroll here on top of the mountain, and that puts you into like a vision of the past where the old heroes actually defeated Elduin the first time. <coughs> but that's lame. We're not going to do that because cutscenes are boring and they're not fast. So Rex is going to quickly set up a glitch here that we'll get to in a little bit. And he's just gonna have some fun, you know. It's just, I yeah. feel, I feel he, you've earned a break with that <sighs> terrible horse. You need some rest and relaxation. You know, it's 8 a.m. I got an hour of sleep. I, I want to go do something fun. Yeah, you, you gotta, you gotta get something to focus. And uh, I think, I think learning about marriage is a uh, is a pretty good idea. You need to, obviously, you buy an amulet. And then you put it on. But that's how you know you're you're ready to get what, busy. Oh, this guy looks. This guy is fantastic. Throw some money at him, and boom, he's ready to go. Exactly. All right, All right. Oh, we're getting married. Let's go. Who that? It's getting hot in here. <laughs> Settle down, chops. It's not my first marriage. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. <laughs> uh, no, I want to go to Dragon's Reach. Yeah, you want to go to Dragon's Reach. So you have to uh, you have to wait until the next day. So you just do some uh, fast Seems travels to oh. skip over that. Oh shit! And then uh, we, go, we go back. Our follower is already waiting at the temple. Oh, it worked finally. That's been giving me grief lately. But uh, yeah. I think I think I got a good feeling about this marriage. No, no, wait, hold on. You still have to read the Elder Scroll, right? Yeah, I guess I can do it right now. Yeah, we we should probably do the cutscene yeah. thing. So here we are at the wedding. Oh, there he is. There's, hey, there's wait. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, great. Well, the Elder Scroll just teleported and you. And we failed to attend our wedding. Oh, he's going to be mad. You're now in the past at the top of the mountain. You failed your wedding. And it turns out failing your wedding actually gives you back control. The cutscene's supposed to take control away, so you have to just stand there and watch the entire thing. But it so happens that if you fa fail your wedding, it just gives you back control. And you, uh, you can see up a lot of this cutscene. So he just... He's, I guess, in the chapel looking at the Elder Scroll in the present, and then in the past he's somehow m killed the dragon that was supposed to be slain by Gormla thousands of years ago, or something. I don't know. This makes sense. Marriage. This was found by Ark. I don't know if you can see him on the camera. Probably not. But uh, it's one of the goofiest things that's ever been found in a speedrun, I think. So you can go through, you can... Uh, <coughs> You kill the dragon, you can mash E on all their dialogue so it skips all their dialogue. And he's going to be fast traveling back and forth a little bit to skip some more dialogue from uh, Alduin. Yeah, normally you'd have to just stand still and sit through this entire thing, but because we have player control, we just, you know, just skip all of it. There's still a little bit left. We can uh, do a donation while he's finishing it up. Yeah. All right, we have a $5 donation from Joe oh. WW. I used to be an adventurer like you, but then oh. I took a bucket and oh. ran into a wall. Uh, we have $5 from Maja. ESA, yay. What a great way to spend my first week of summer holiday. Elder Scroll games are my favorite, and I will donate again during Morrowind. Oh. Good luck. We have a $5 donation from Anonymous, a donation to Runner's Choice. Their sexual Tyrannosaurus, if getting to a later quest in the line skips previous quests, why can't we just skip farther? Because there's no actual way to trigger anything uh, No. Uh, uh, so you're, you're supposed to uh, kill Gormley to skip that animation, but 
Just got a little unlucky. Whoa. Aegon's going for a ride, maybe. Alright, so this cutscene's about to end. Uh, this is a pretty new skip found recently. I'm gonna fast travel out of here at a very specific time. And we're gonna go discover a Windhelm early, because we're gonna go there later. And this saves about like 10 seconds yeah. compared to just finishing the cutscene normally. Instead of just waiting for it to end, we can just go do something productive, like get a fast travel point for later. And there's like not much margin for error here. So you see he'll he'll take the carriage and then he'll be teleported back to the mountain because the cutscene ended immediately after. So now we have uh, the first fight with Elduin. This is one of three fights you have to do. And uh, it's definitely the hardest one. This fight is very hard, especially when you're High Elf. Yeah, so we're playing as High Elf because they run the fastest. Normally, we, where before, we'd play as Orc because they'd have Berserkers of Rage and it would make the fighting really easy and fast. But uh, we can abuse this thing called Infinite Power Attacks where you can do these power attacks with the two swords without actually using any infinite. And you're also need, you also need to stand in certain positions to bait out the correct attack, the wing attack, because that does the least damage. And you just need to control uh, control the staggers that Alvin gets based on his damage and based on shouts to actually uh, stop his big attacks from going off. So you see, he actually got pretty low on health. There is not much margin for error on this fight. And if you mess up a little bit, you can uh, you can actually get killed by Parthenax even, because he'll jump down and start breathing fire, and you can get caught in the crossfire and die. Yeah, that was actually a really good fight. That went really well. I was worried about Parthenax, because friendly fire is not the thing it's got. Literal Sky. friendly fire. <laughs> yeah. Good one. Didn't think of that. Thanks, man. All right, so now that we got Alduin, uh, you know, defeated kind of uh he's not really defeated he's in sovereign guard now so we have to uh get alduin and by doing that we have to uh trap a dragon and before we trap a dragon we have to go ask uh well actually we have to create a peace council to trap a dragon because Jarl Balgriff is not having any of it there's a war going on in skyrim and he will not trap a dragon unless uh there's peace if you look that there we go. Now since we skipped a ton of quests, uh I think his name is Farangar is not up to date. He still thinks uh the dragon stone is a thing, so we're just gonna ask him where this dragon stone is and uh their quest is up to date. And now we could finally ask uh Balgriff what we're really looking for here. Yeah, the whole conversation that we just went through is something that you're supposed to do right at the very beginning of the game when you first get here, but we just kind of never did it. But Balgruff is still stuck in that state, so we have to go through it before we can move on with the Peace Council. So now we got to negotiate a council, and the first person we're going to see is uh, this old man. And I think we should be on schedule with everything. Yep, he's yeah. outside. Perfect. Yeah, so uh, um, the fast travels and everything we've done have actually manipulated the in-game time. So Arndir sits outside at like from 4 to 5 in the morning or something around there. And that means we can just uh, run straight over to him, talk to him, and then immediately fast travel away rather than looking for him inside. And there's a couple of little things that are nice with the in-game time. Yeah, all the fast travels and stuff like that I've been doing have been like calculated to get this guy out here. And then we can just immediately fast travel out and do the other things. We have to go see uh, two of the main factions, and that's uh, Tullius and Ulfric. And right now we're going to see Tullius, a uh, courier. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Yo! My order of the so just like punching them in the shoulder, you can also breathe fire all over them in there. They'll take you exactly where you want to go. It's pretty nice. And. Uh, so we just we just need to go to Tullius, get him to come, and then uh, go over to Windhelm, which we already got the fast travel marker for during the cutscene, so we can just go straight there, and we go talk to uh, the other guy, whatever his face is, you know, politics guy, get him to come as well, and then we can go have the peace council. So uh, we can do donation while he's collecting the other guy. 
All right, we have a $5 donation from Basma. Love the dry humor and synergy. Keep on being awesome. Thanks for the love. And we have a $5 donation from Anonymous. Game of Thrones wedding. Oh, no, nobody's dying here. No, the dragon. The dragon's pretty dead. I'm right, just going to mess this wow. thing up. Just ruining their mail for no <laughs> reason. That's really rude, dude. Speak. It's uh, about time they turn... I have the... I can't Good. I doubt the end. Yeah. Alright, so with your expert speech you that you've trained by robbing Halvor completely blind, uh, you've managed to convince both sides to come to the Peace Council. Now, I, I feel bad. I feel really bad, Chops. What, what are you doing? You know, we, we should go to the Council, but we, we gotta go see some kind of guy. I don't understand that. We have to apologize, you know. The council's in Rothgar. No, no, no we, we let him down. So here he is. I can't believe you're oh, my God. It was a mistake. Can we start over? All right. just Perfect. Just, just because it's you, he'll try again. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. God, that's adorable. Please. It's meant to be. Oh, what a great guy. Welcome to Riften. You're actually giving him another chance. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving him another chance. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> All right. It was a mistake, and he's like, ah, oh, perfect, same time as before. All right, let's do this right this time. This is fantastic. I'm really happy for you, too. Oh, thanks, man. So let's just go to Winterhold real quick, because, you know, I don't know. I just felt like going to Winterhold. And let's actually do the council. Um, wedding's tomorrow. We have time. Yeah, totally. That's fine. Just going to wait a few hours, you know. All right, sure. Prime council time. Need a nice sunset for the uh, council. I think it's really, really comfy. That's how you politics, right? Oh, there we go. Okay, let, let's let's go do a peace council. Let's let's get things sorted. All right, uh, you can sit down during the council, but uh, if you just move forward and then use a weight, you know, you'll be standing up during the council. And the council is pretty much quick save, quick loads to skip dialogue and waits. Yeah, it's really boring. There's not really anything you do because you're totally stuck oh. He oh. here. You do. You failed your wedding again. Yeah, I failed my you wedding failed again. Your wedding. He gave you another chance and everything. Oh, jeez. Well, conveniently, you can do it again. And failing your wedding gives you control during the council. Normally, you're stuck in that one spot for the entire time. And you basically have to mash quick save and quick load for like five minutes straight. But that's boring and slow. We're just gonna go in and out of the door a few times and that'll skip through everything a lot faster. Especially with how slow this computer is at quick saving and quick loading. How long have we been looking for a council skip? Um, forever. Literally forever. Yeah, we've tried some pretty crazy things to skip this council and we finally found one. Well, sort of. I mean, cutscene skip and council skip were like the two things that were never thought we'd be able to do anything like that. And thanks to Ark and Elnita Doctor, we uh, we have something of the like. So, Dragon Ball, well said. All right. Uh, we still have to talk to them, so we're just going in and out to uh, go through the uh, mandatory dialogue lines. Now we're just gonna wait here for two seconds and. Council's over. Sick, dude. Now, normally it would be like four minutes of quick save, quick loads to skip dialogue, but now and we can just do that oh, and the council is skipped. And conveniently, they talk to you from super far away when you walk in, so you don't even have to go all the way back. And now we have Odaving's name, which means we can actually capture the dragon. Well, that was a good peace council, you know? They, they figured things out on their own, like grown-ups. They didn't even need the Dragonborn. They no. just worked, it, worked out their issues. It's great. Well, we just need to make sure <coughs> Balgriff is actually ready to go. Another thing with the in-game time manipula manipulation, he's actually promise. sitting out here ready to go, which is I nice. Know what to do. And uh, it turns out you can just, like, call <gasps> Odaving. Ha! Oh. oh, that was not a full charge. All right, there we go. Oh, I can't find my Z key. There, we go. there, you there go. we go. Full 
full throat. I, I got there. You know, I was struggling. Holding a button is pretty hard. Yeah, it's it's harder than it looks. Uh, but fortunately, Odevang actually hears you shout him, even though you're indoors. And then that lets you manipulate a, another shout here, oh, where you shout him as soon as you go oh, through the there door. There he goes. No! Oh. Oh. And the guard landed in midair, and that means Odevang has to swipe down and kill him. And he goes, like, through, <laughs> through oh. uh, Dragon's Reach. And the bow's just hanging out there. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks, Skyrim. Oh, Skyrim. Oh, don't land on her. All right, good. Yeah. Follow me. These NPCs control and uh, clip or like weirdly clip with the dragon hitbox and slide around. Fortunately, that didn't happen. And then you can just kind of like leave and just like the peace council, these people just kind of deal with it themselves. Dragonborn isn't really all that useful, apparently. But you get to take all the credit for it, so it's great. So he agrees to. Uh, Take well, you to Skuldafen, which will lead to Alduin's final hidey hole, I guess. Which is basically the end game. But first of all, to get through Skuldafen, there's a you know there's a really big dungeon that you have to go through. It's like really brutal. It's like minutes long. Yeah, fast traveling. It just skips a really janky looking flying animation. Oh yeah. So uh, Skuldafen's, like Chop said, is a very long and tedious dungeon, so we're not going to go through that. Uh, if you remember that bucket we picked up, you know, we've been picking up buckets. We're just going to look here. Not that bucket. Oh, Uh-oh, uh -oh, that dragon's landing. This bucket. This bucket. Oh, oh based bucket. Come on. You based can do it. You can do it. Care. Oh, where's the bucket? There's the bucket. All right. Luckily, there's a backup, so that's fine. So instead of going all the way up through the dungeon, you can just kind of fly on your magical bucket and just get up to the next level where the dungeon would drop you out. Come on, man. Set up for this. What are you doing? Yeah, it's, I'm having deja vu. It's like GDQ all over again. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was uncalled for. You tried. So, yeah, I mean, we're... Uh, we're just past the entire dungeon. You can just go straight through the... Uh, it feels so good to get a first try bucket, though. Yeah. It's it's like partially execution and partially sometimes the bucket just stops partway. So getting it to go all the way up in one go is really satisfying. But yeah, we're, we're in Sovngarde, which is like basically heaven. So I guess the portal killed us or something. Uh, I don't know. Skyrim. Skyrim. Lore. Lore happened. Alduin's like flying around this area right now, but unfortunately he's completely invincible and there's nothing you can do to, to stop him. So we need to get the help of the old heroes that we we like bullied during the cutscene. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sadly we couldn't save Gormleth. Oh wait, no, sh we, never mind. Well, they're all dead technically because <laughs> yeah. this is heaven or something. Uh, but first you have the real final boss oh, fight. this guy. All right, we're going to see if this goes well. All right, are you doing fast tracks? Yeah, I'll do Bring fast tracks. Okay. Oh. okay, you still got him. All right. So if you uh, if you miss one of those attacks with a fire shout, he can actually completely wreck your entire face off and just insta-kill you, which is pretty terrible. But as long as you don't mess up, it's it's pretty easy. Yeah, that fast fight was for you, Doctor. You're welcome. Good job. And now we got these heroes, but being heroes, they're they're slow and they like to talk a lot, and they're really annoying. So we need to. Uh, it's gonna do the dragonborn thing of going in and out of areas, and you seem to do that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> just let people deal with things on their own. Very unreliable. <laughs> Very flaky. <laughs> yeah. Way. And luckily, it doesn't look like any of them got stuck on the bridge, which can happen occasionally. Yeah, that's why I was like, looking. <laughs> All right, we're good. But here we're heading up to the final fight, the final showdown with Alduin, after we skip some dialogue. Uh, what what an exciting fight! Oh, it's gonna yeah, this exciting fight of blowing mist back and <laughs> forth at each other. Oh, uh, oh boy. Uh, we have to do this a few times so we can do the last few donations before the actual fight. All right, we have.
have a $2 donation from Odium. Did he just tassel the Wabble Gong first try in a marathon run? Pock Champ. Oh, we have a $1 donation from Geeky FD. Uh, hey, Rexy Bexy, it's me. Just wanted to wish you good luck on your run. I can't believe I woke up this early, but it was all worth it. Miss you, oh, see you soon, lovely. And we have a $2 donation from Swags a Dog. Council height. Oh, shit, Swags. He swags. Oh, my dog. Everybody, oh, my dog in chat for Swags. All right, so you valiantly blew back the mist. And now Alduin himself is going to come out. And we actually know where he's going to spawn. So we can run up here on the mountain. And as soon as he spawns in, uh, poke out and show him. If you stand in the wrong spot, he'll spawn in a different spot and you get completely screwed over. So yeah, there's like three spots you can land in. Now we just have the final fight. Time is coming up when he is defeated. Yep. Is there a button you can press? Sorry. No, there's no buttons. Oh. Real men just show time. All right. And time. Well done. Congrats on not dying. Thanks, thanks. Rough start, but that run actually went surprisingly well. Like, everything went really well. The game did not be mean to me. Oh, man, but... You left that guy on the altar. You know, I'm twice. still thinking about it. Like, you know, I feel really empty inside. So, um, true love ending donation incentive got met, I think. So, l l let's, you know what? I'm going to be honest, Chops. I didn't like Markirio. He was uh, he's not the man for me. It's not true love. You can't go through with it. Not You'd the just man be hurting for me. Him more. Yeah, I'm uh, just going to get out of here. I'm ready to return.